the Alba Party. Alba will contest the upcoming Scottish elections as a list-only party under my leadership seeking to build a supermajority for independence in the Scottish Parliament. Over the next six weeks, we'll promote new ideas about taking Scotland forward, giving primacy to economic recovery from the pandemic and the achievement of independence for our country. We expect to field a, a minimum of four candidates in each regional list, and we're hoping to elect ALBA MSPs from every area of Scotland. Today, I want to introduce you to the party, to its aims, and to some of our very first candidates. Today we are making an entirely positive statement and also asking people to come forward and give us support. Given the unique circumstances of this election campaign, uh, these messages you're about to see are in video form. However, I would like to introduce you to three of our candidates. First, let's hear from Eva Comrie, who will be standing for Alba in Mid-Scotland at Fife. Thank you, Alec. Hello. I'm Eva Comrie. I was born in Stirling in the heart of Scotland and brought up happily in Blaylogie, Creef and Alva. I went on with the assistance of a grant to study law at Edinburgh. I'm your bionic candidate because the Scottish NHS saved my life and my mobility. They've provided me with a couple of dozen artificial legs and they rebuilt my titanium spine. Independence for Scotland has been my lifetime's desire and for that reason I have today relinquished my candidacy in the number one spot for the SNP in Mid-Scotland and Fife. And that's because I've accepted an invite to stand as a list candidate for the ALBA party because the ALBA party will ensure as a list party that Scotland elects a super majority for independence. In addition, as a woman and as a lawyer, you might understand that I've been a little disappointed that equalities policies have not been as positive as they might have been. So I intend to continue to campaign on that topic and I'll be delivering a policy paper on equalities at our candidates consultation every on Saturday. Finally, I need to say that this will be a positive campaign run with a spirit of determination that what we will focus on in Alba and what I will focus on will be what is best for the people who live and work in the area where I've lived and worked for all of my life. And my primary aim is to ensure that I am part of the team that attains independence for our country and rebuilds our country when we have our independence once more. Thank you. Shara Alba Gubra. Thank you, Eva. As Eva mentioned, uh, we're going to have a, a candidates conference a, a week on Saturday, and I can think of no one better uh, to present the equalities policy to that conference uh, than Eva. And I look forward to, to seeing her policy and to the discussion which arises. And a second up today from Cynthia Guthrie, who intends to stand in the south of Scotland for Alba. Hello Alec, I'm Cynthia Guthrie and I'm very honoured to be standing for the Alba party in the south of Scotland in the forthcoming parliamentary elections. My background's business and what's really been lacking in the Scottish Parliament are experienced business people. I've got a track record, proven track record in corporates and also in an SME which I currently co-own. We have got to establish and get an ecosystem, get the economy back up and running and really help businesses transition out of the COVID pandemic. So I'm really looking forward to starting, putting all my experience to good use in Parliament. My hope is that people will support the ALBA party. Let us get a super majority on the 6th of May. Thanks, Cynthia. And Cynthia's uh, expertise uh, in business uh, is going to be hugely invaluable if she's elected to the, the Scottish Parliament, given the, the priority of recovery uh, from the pandemic. And now, finally for today, for the candidates list, is uh, Councillor Chris McElhenney from the, from the west of Scotland. Hello, Alec. Thank you very much. And thank you for your 
words there, they were very much an inspiration. My name's Chris McElhaney, I'm a councillor in Inverclyde in the west of Scotland. I was first elected as an SNP councillor in 2012 and had the great privilege of leading the SNP in Inverclyde for almost a decade. But today I've relinquished my membership of the SNP. I will no longer be standing for the SNP on the West of Scotland list and instead I'll be standing for the ALBA party alongside you so that we can deliver a super majority for independence at the upcoming Scottish parliamentary elections. Many people may know that over the past years I've been calling for a plan B so that when Boris Johnson continues to tell us no, we can't have a choice in our own future, we make sure we have that choice. And I think that the ALBA party is exactly what is needed right now so that the SNP can absolutely win constituencies across Scotland but only by voting for the ALBA party on the list can we deliver that super majority for our independence. Thank you and back over to you Alec. Oh, well, thanks, Chris. And, uh, of course, <laughs> the man who made Plan B uh, a household term. Now, I should say that, that ALBA was founded by the journalist Laurie Flynn, who has provided a, a statement today for distribution, which will be set out in the, the ALBA site. I had discussions uh, with Laurie, uh, and indeed others from other list parties over the, the past few weeks, but I, I'm sure it's the, the concept of ALBA, which is the one which is most soundly based. The party's strategic aims are clear and unambiguous. To achieve a successful, socially just, environmentally responsible, independent country. The tactics are to stand for the regional list to secure the supermajority for independence in our parliament. We intend to contribute policy ideas to assist Scotland's economic recovery and to help build a, an independence platform to face new political realities. At the last election, there were nearly one million wasted SNP votes on the regional list. Only four SNP MSPs were elected in that way. In yesterday's Servation poll, the SNP would elect no regional seats at all from a million votes on the list. They would all be totally wasted independence votes. Now, if ALBA wins regional list seats, the wasted votes end. The number of independents supporting MSPs in the Parliament could reach 90 or even more. The initiative for independence should then be led by the Parliament, uniting the parties. Boris Johnson has already said no to the SNP proposals. He will find it much more difficult to say no to a Parliament and a country. And the independence debate will be recast, not as the Tories against the SNP, but Boris Johnson against Scotland's Parliament representing Scotland's people. Today Alba are hoisting a flag in the wind, planting our saltire on a hill. In the next few weeks, we'll see how many will rally to our standard. Now, thank you very much. I'm about to show a, a video and then we're going to move on to, to questions.
Ah, good, James. Well, good, well done. Uh, now, we're, we're going into questions now. Don't, don't worry, we've got many, many questions. And uh, uh, if people can, uh, if we can restrict to the one question each, because there are so many, uh, we're going to do uh, television, print journalists, bloggers uh, in order. And don't worry, we'll get through everybody's question. I'll stay, I'll stay here until all the questions are answered. But first up, we've got, uh, if I can see correctly, I think we've got Jim Matthews of Sky Television. Jim, on you go. Thanks, Jim. Uh, on the, the the question about you know what's going to provide the majority for independence, uh, uh, as we set out uh, arithmetically, it's very very clear indeed. Uh, and the Salvation poll I mentioned, the latest poll shows that absolutely. I mean, what that shows, and that on the constituency section, the SNP would win a majority of seats, a bare majority, but a majority. Uh, I, I think the figure was sixty-seven. Uh, but in the list section of the Holyrood poll, the SNP would win no seats whatsoever. Uh, but despite having a, a, a best part of a million votes in the list, they would win no seats whatsoever. Uh, now, the Alba party is a, a list party. Uh, we're standing only in the list. We're not challenging the SNP in the constituencies. Indeed, we're saying vote SNP or for an independence uh, party on the constituency section. We're giving that, that support. Our campaign that we launch is going to be uh, entirely positive. Uh, now, as far as the second part of your question, Jim, I mean, we've had, uh, let's see, two court cases, two judges, one jury, uh, three inquiries. Uh, and uh, I'm prepared to accept the results of all of these. Uh, so it is time uh, to move on. Uh, the outstanding things from there are things that were recommended by the inquiries, the civil action against the permanent secretary, and the Scottish Government, uh, that was recommend came out of the recommendations of the parliamentary inquiry uh, and the report to the police on the leak, which has caused so much distress for everyone uh, involved, uh, then that certainly came out of the, uh, uh, the Hamilton report and the comments of the parliamentary inquiry. Uh, so after the two court cases, the jury, the three inquiries, it is time to move on. Uh, I wanted to talk about the future of Scotland for the last three years. Now I've got the opportunity, thanks to the Alba party, and that's exactly what I intend to do. I intend to do it in an entirely positive way. Uh, we've got to establish the independence platform, which will enable us to take this country to independence. We've got to respond to the, the challenges of the pandemic, the economic challenges, which are going to come upon us very soon. We're not even out of the woods of the pandemic yet. Uh, these are the ideas that ALBA uh, are going to contribute. And as you see, the, the positive platform that emerges from ALBA, I think it's going to reinforce the momentum behind the independence cause, and that's exactly what we intend to do. Now, next up in a question, I think we have the Times newspaper and Kieran Andrews, I think.
Right, I, I, I think I've got your, your question, Kieran. Uh, this is quite central to what the ALBA party is putting forward. Uh, we are saying that the independent strategy should lie with the parliament. That's why we need a supermajority. We think it will be fundamentally more difficult uh, for Boris Johnson to say no to a parliament than he does to a, a party. Uh, so if you have in the Scottish Parliament a substantial majority of MSPs across a range of parties who are supporting independence, then that is a very powerful position to start independence negotiations. If you don't do it that way and put forward a proposal for a Section 30 or for even for a, a, a plebiscite of some kind, without that majority behind you, uh, then Boris Johnson will say, no, this is a, an SNP fascination, this is a party, this is a, the UK government against the SNP, and we're entitled to say no. We've got to cast the independence debate, uh, not as that, but rather as Boris Johnson against Scotland's parliament representing Scotland's people. Uh, that's why the supermajority concept is fundamental uh, to the success of the negotiations for, for independence. Uh, and now we move on to the the blogging community, and I think we've got the Wings Over Scotland, uh, Stuart Campbell. Stuart? strategic game of uh, ALBA is to secure Scottish independence, which is a substantial uh, strategic aim. We think, uh, as I've just said to Kieran, that the, the supermajority building that substantial majority in the Scottish Parliament is uh, the key to, to unlock that, uh, that, that question, and it's the key to the way forward. Now, uh, if ALBA uh, helps and it is helping because we're not standing on the, the constituency ballot. We expect that to be dominated by the, the Scottish National Party. But if Albert can help by contributing independent supporting MSPs and their expertise, they're contribute, contributing to the, the new platform that we're going to have to build in independence to meet the, the new political realities, ideas to get us out of the pandemic in an economic sense as quickly as possible. If we can contribute these, then that's an entirely positive thing. As to what happens, I mean, if we are able to assist, to help in achieving our country's uh, independence, then, you know, <laughs> that's really what, uh, that's, uh, that's more than enough for, for me as a, as a person, I'm sure for the ALBA MSPs who are elected. Uh, but anything that happens beyond that will be entirely a matter for the for the Scottish people because we, like every other political party, uh, are in the hands of the people. Now I think we're on to television again. Uh, on, in, term, in terms of the first part of your question, I mean, everything I've said on the record stands. Uh, but after the, the court cases, after the judges, after the jury, after the inquiries, uh, my view is we should accept the results of everything. Uh, the ones we like, the ones we don't like, and then we, we move on. Everything I've said about everything stands uh, as it did. In terms of the difference between the SNP uh, and ALBA, then it's <laughs> pretty obvious that the difference is that the the SNP are standing in the constituencies and the list. ALBA is a list-only party. 
Uh, as I pointed out uh, at the last election, uh, the best part of a, a million SNP list votes were wasted, electing only four uh, MSPs from the list, the regional list section. Uh, if we are to accept uh, the suggestions from the Salvation poll yesterday, the, the SNP would have a massive victory on the constituency section of the ballot, but not elect a single, not one single list MSP because of the, the workings of the DeHaunt system. And that was a million votes. It would be wasted. Now, ALBA and indeed other parties are, are standing as list-only parties. If we are successful in electing MSPs, if the people decide to give ALBA their votes, then that will add and build what we're describing as the independent supermajority in Scotland's parliament. That allows us to cast the independence debate, not as party against party, not as SNP against the Tories, not as Nicola Sturgeon against Boris Johnson, but allows us to cast the debate as it should be cast. That is the Tory Prime Minister saying no to Scotland. Not to saying no to a political party, but saying no to Scotland's parliament and Scotland's people. And I think it's fundamentally more difficult for Boris Johnson to say no to the parliament and the people. And the strategy for obtaining independence, it should be one that we entrust to the parliament with, we hope, and it's up to the people, but we hope a substantial supermajority for independence in that parliament. Uh, and now next up, there will be a member of the press corps. Thank you. For, you're very well informed and you managed to get three questions in, Pila, but uh, can, I, can, I take, can, I take them in, uh, can I take them in turn? My, my, my main reason for returning to politics, by invitation from Laurie Flynn and his colleagues in the, the ALBA party, to, to give uh, a list party the, the profile I think it needs to, to make a breakthrough in this election, entirely up to the, the people of Scotland. But if we do make that breakthrough, uh, then it's going to result not in a a narrow majority of, uh, or perhaps even no majority of uh, independent supporting MSPs in our parliament, but we think it will result in a super majority, a substantial majority, which is the parliamentary base that's required uh, in order to be in a strong position uh, to negotiate our independence with the, with the UK government. Uh, as far as the GRA and other policies are concerned, you perhaps heard Eva Comrie say that she was taking out a qualities paper uh, to our candidates' conference a, a week tomorrow. Uh, and as I said, I can think of no better person to take that qualities paper forward. Uh, but there is, it's an issue of how do you reconcile uh, the important rights of equality for all uh, with the hard-won rights that, uh, that people, particularly women, have uh, uh, achieved, uh, the, the sex-based rights to private spaces. Uh, and that's the issues that are tackled in uh, Eva's paper, and it comes across in a very positive way. I'm looking forward to the ALBA debating that a week on Saturday and the policies that, that come out of it. And in terms of the process by which the statecraft, uh, by which we uh, make sure that, uh, that the Prime Minister bows to the will of the Scottish people, then it is absolutely vital uh, that we win the argument for legitimacy of the independence question. Uh, how you establish that, whether it's a Section 30 referendum or a, a, a plebiscite, that, that's a tactic by which you're achieving that legitimacy. But the first port to call legitimacy is Scotland's Parliament speaking for Scotland's people. 
and to cast the debate and the argument and the negotiations uh, as a Tory Prime Minister against a Parliament as opposed to party against party uh, is fundamental uh, to winning that argument. Uh, I can tell you from experience that uh, uh, extracting concessions from, uh, from Westminster is uh, never an easy process. Uh, there's many countries and many places around the world who could uh, testify to that in their history. Uh, but it can be done, it will be done, and essential to having it done is to have that supermajority in the Parliament, and that's what ALBA stands for. Uh, and then we go on to our, our, our next question. OK, good questions, Paul, but the answer to the first one is uh, unambiguously yes. I'll campaign with all the uh, uh, people who, who are putting forward the, the, the independence cause in, uh, in a referendum, as you would do in a referendum. Uh, can I say that, uh, to just to re-emphasise the point I made to Pillar, that a, a referendum is one tactic. I mean, I, I uh, uh, moved forward to a referendum under a Section 30 clause in, 20, in 2014, as you know. Uh, but that was the they done because that was the best way to achieve uh, the legitimacy of an independence referendum, the acceptance of independence by Westminster, if the Scottish people said yes at that time. It's by no means the, the only route. The route has to be democratic, but there's a range of pressures uh, and uh, things you can establish in, in terms of uh, bringing the, uh, the independence case forward. Uh, as I said, the Section 30 referendum, the plebiscite idea, international legal action, the uh, peaceful street demonstrations, popular will, these are all tactics, but the tactics have to be founded on the legitimacy of the Parliament. The Parliament has to have, I believe, not a bare majority for independence within it, but a supermajority. That changes the balance fundamentally into Scotland's favour. That's what I think Alba's got to offer. But of course, this is not a, a matter for, that should be decided by personalities. This is a, a matter of policy in the future of Scotland. And then it behoves everyone, everyone, uh, to accept the verdict of the people, whatever it may be, uh, and certainly to rally to Scotland's cause uh, uh, when, they, when the time comes. Uh, in terms of your second question, Alba's not really a, a party which is looking to, to government posts. Uh, the contributions that we're trying to make are threefold. One is to build that supermajority. Secondly, is immediately, and this will emerge from a, a week on Saturday, the policy conference and during the campaign, you know, specific ideas, principally on economic recovery for Scotland from the pandemic. This is the urgent requirement. The, the consequences in economic terms of the pandemic have not really hit us yet. I mean, the consequences in social terms and family terms, of course, uh, have hit us over the last year, all of us, uh, and uh, and that's uh, obvious. But the economic consequences of the pandemic are still to come, and therefore economic recovery is an overwhelming priority. Uh, and the third thing that Alba can contribute is, you know, the world has moved on since 2014. The, the independence platform has to be refashioned and rebuilt to meet the, the new realities. Uh, and other aspects of what emerges from ALBA over the next six weeks will address that point. So these are the three contributions that ALBA can make to the independence debate rather than looking for, uh, uh, for seats in government, which we don't see uh, as our role. Next question up.
We've, they come from a range of experience. Uh, I think Chris has uh, uh, has been instrumental in in advancing the independence debate, getting people to to think what happens if. Uh, and uh, in a way, of course, that's been the the genesis of the Alba Party, and in seeing and understanding that a, a parliament, a secure majority in parliament for independence, is fundamental uh, to the independence cause. So we welcome the contribution for from Chris and from the other candidates that will be unveiling and the uh, candidates conference. I, I think will be uh, will be uh, uh, an exciting and. Uh, And very productive event uh, a week tomorrow. In terms of people, I mean, look, this is a democracy. This is an election. Everybody, everybody has the right to stand. Everybody has the right to put forward a point of view, uh, and then the people obviously have the right to choose. Uh, so I, I, I see strength in that diversity of choice, uh, and uh, the people of Scotland will, uh, in the elections, decide which way they, they want to go, both in terms of the constituency ballot, where the SNP is dominant at the present moment, and I hope it stays that way, uh, but also in terms of the list ballot, where the opportunity is there to see really a, a substantial number more independents supporting MSPs uh, elected, and I hope the people choose to do that as well. So next question up, I think we're back to the broadcasters move. Yes. And uh, so next question up. <laughs> that exchange will be a model exchange for everyone. <laughs> Right, next, next question up, please. Is Amy up next? Denise? Well, there is the as we heard earlier, Eva Comrie is coming forward for the qualities paper for for next Saturday's candidates conference. And that encompasses some uh, questions over the hate crime bill, uh, uh, and uh, I I would, uh, I, I, I mean I I think I shouldn't speak in advance of the uh, of the paper and the, the the conversations that occur. But I mean I I I sympathise with Eva Comrie's, and I suspect yours. 
uh, question marks over that bill and, and doubts and questions about the implementation. Uh, and uh, I, although some assurances were given, uh, perhaps uh, they need to require to be uh, to be strengthened uh, because there is a great deal of uh, heart and concern uh, about aspects of the legislation and fears of how it might be interpreted. And over a range of issues, and I'm not going into anyone in particular, but over a range of issues, uh, let's just say that the, the Crown Office has substantial work to do uh, in terms of uh, demonstrating uh, that there's a, a, an appropriate separation of powers between the, the political side of the uh, of government legal advice and the implementation of the of the independent prosecutorial prosecutorial function, uh, but the the question, the direct question on the the hate crime bill that is encompassed uh, in Eva's paper, but it is hugely important uh, on this <laughs> issue and indeed on the, the range of wider political issues that we get these debates as far as possible onto an entirely positive footing. Uh, and the one distinguishing feature, not the one distinguishing feature, a number of distinguishing features Alba will have, but the one distinguishing feature of these uh, is that uh, I give uh, undertaking that everything that Alba says and does in this uh, election campaign and in its aftermath uh, will be entirely positive, entirely constructive. It uh, will try to put forward ideas in a fashion, in a manner uh, which... Uh, raises the, the debate to the, to the level that we would expect when we're contemplating Scotland's future, Scotland's social structure, uh, and Scotland as an independent country. It's absolutely vital that we conduct a debate in, in that fashion, and I absolutely pledge uh, on behalf of the, the uh, four ALBA candidates already declared, myself included, and, and the many more who will be declared over the next few days, that that's exactly how we'll conduct ourselves and our approach to the independence and social debates in Scotland over this campaign. And if we are fortunate enough uh, to be chosen by the people uh, to represent part of our country in the Scottish Parliament. Now, next up. Michael Blackley. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, you've talked today about how your party is going to assist the SNP in helping to bring about this, this super majority. But is the truth not that your announcement today is actually going to be Nicola Sturgeon's worst nightmare? Have, with everything that's gone on in recent weeks, the, the last thing that she wants to see is you showing up at the Scottish Parliament uh, under a new banner. Um, even today, you've outlined a, not only Plan B, but it seems to be Plan C, Plan D and Plan E to independence. Are, are you not just going to be uh, someone who exposes the divisions in the nationalist movement and is uh, absolutely not what Nicola Sturgeon wants to be in the Scottish Parliament? Well, the other party will be putting forward in its literature the, the argument that people should vote for independence candidates, which means the SNP, uh, in their constituency ballot. So uh, uh, we'll be expressing that support for the SNP in our literature for constituency ballots, we'll be saying vote ALBA in the regional list ballot for the obvious point that this will return more independence supporting uh, MSPs. <laughs> if, as we win independence, uh, it's going to be, as it always has been, be able to touch a variety of opinions across Scottish society and a variety of, of sections of Scottish society. People in a range of viewpoints from a range of backgrounds and a range of political stances have to be comfortable with the independence concept. But more than being comfortable with it, they've got to be able to contribute to it, contribute to the independence process. Now, I think it's fundamentally stronger to have something which we didn't really have in 2014 until the, the last weeks of the campaign when the grassroots movement really took off in a, a hugely substantial way. But for much of the early stages of the campaign, it was cast as a, a an SNP campaign. It was an SNP against uh, uh, the then Cameron government. It was uh, us forcing forward uh, uh, views of having a referendum uh, against the wishes of the Scottish people. We, we didn't have that campaign wide enough and broad enough to encompass more support. So I, I see different strands of independence thinking in the Parliament as a great strength of achieving uh, progress in the negotiations which should happen 
uh, if that parliament is elected with the UK government. Uh, I think the position of Boris Johnson will be fundamentally weaker if he has to say no to an entire parliament representing an entire nation as opposed to be able to cast it as a as just something which has been promoted by the SNP. So I, I see the range of independence viewpoints as a, a strength, and I, I hope that Alba can contribute to that. In terms of how that's conducted, uh, well, we commit ourselves, I commit Alba, to conducting an entirely positive campaign. Uh, we are not standing in the constituency ballot. We wish the SNP well in sweeping the country on the constituency ballot. But we have substantial arguments to offer which we'll do in the regional list. And if we are successful in persuading people to back us, then that will result in what we described as the supermajority for independence in Scotland's Parliament. Now to the next question. Musen. Hello, Mr. Simon. Chris Musson from the Scottish Sun. Um, recent polling has underlined how unpopular you your heyday. Two pots think of you unfavourably. Doesn't this show that you're discredited now and that it's time to step away from the public eye rather than into it? Yes, the, the campaign is just beginning uh, and uh, who'll decide who's elected will be the, the people of Scotland. Uh, my view is if you're able to put forward a a positive platform and a positive stance, uh, then people will rally to, to that banner. That's the hope I have. As I said, we are planting a salt iron in the sand, a salt iron in the hill today for all to see. And we're hoping that uh, the people rally to that cause. Uh, that will be decided by the, by the people. We will either get support or we won't. I believe we can get support. But obviously, one of the things I'm going to relish about the next six weeks is that uh, I'll be able to talk about the what I've wanted to talk about all my life, which is the potential of Scotland as a, an independent country. I'll be able to talk about the, the positive ideas that we can bring forward to contribute to that process, to the understanding of Scotland's uh, potential. Uh, and all of us will, as ALBA candidates, will have uh, uh, the joy of, uh, of being able to articulate that cause. It's a cause that's been dearest to my heart, all of, not just my political life, but all of my life full stop. So that is the subject territory which uh, I haven't been able to speak about for, for three years now. And I want to speak about now, and I'm going to speak about over the next six weeks, uh, and then we'll let the, the people judge uh, whether or not that's gaining support. And now on to the next question. Hi, Libby Brooks from The Guardian. Um, we've been reporting on significant concerns that the recent Holyrood inquiries and the way that they played out have had a chilling effect on people coming forward with sexual harassment complaints. Do you have any concerns that by standing and inevitably keeping all of this in the spotlight, you're going to compound that chilling effect? Well, you know, I, I wasn't responsible for the way that uh, the Holyrood inquiry was uh, was conducted, uh, and you know that's a matter for those who conducted it. What I'm responsible for saying, as far as I'm concerned, uh, with uh, two court cases, two judges, one jury, three inquiries, because it wasn't just the parliamentary inquiry. There was the Hamilton inquiry, and uh, of course the Dunlop uh, recommendations have to be taken into account. Uh, these have to be accepted by everyone. The two outstanding matters, which we've mentioned earlier, the, the civil case in the, in the court and uh, also the report to the police on criminal matters concerning the leak to the record, which everyone, everyone agreed uh, had a, a dreadful effect on everyone concerned uh, back in August 2018. These are things that came out of the, the recommendations of the Howard Inquiry. Uh, I thought there was many things in that inquiry which were very positive, and I thought the, the recommendations which were unanimous, uh, then presumably people can accept that these should be taken on board. But my view is we have to accept what has been said by the, uh, the courts, by the judges, by the jury, by the inquiries, and we have to move on. And in this campaign, I'll be moving on to talk about the, the future of Scotland, about how we develop not just the independence supermajority, but confidence independence is the way forward for our country. 
Uh, that to me is the, the contribution that I'll be able to help ALBA make in the campaign. Only a contribution because uh, we can only conduct our campaign, but our campaign will be conducted in an entirely positive fashion. Next question. Greg Russell. Hello, Alex. Greg Russell from The National here. How does your position on India F2 differ from the SNP's, in essence? And do you want the, uh, the other pro indie parties to unite behind you? Well, uh, Greg, I I'm putting forward the Arbus point of view, and I, I think everyone else uh, has a total entitlement to, to stand on, on the platform they wish. That's the essence of an election. Uh, give people the choice, and that's the, the case for each constituency ballot, and it's the case for, for each regional list ballot. Uh, so, I mean, I've read, obviously, the, the SNP's 11-point plan for achieving independence. I suppose ALPA has a, has a one-point plan uh, about how the mechanism by which you can increase the chances of delivering independence in this coming parliament, uh, and that is to trust the parliament as the key body which achieves the legitimacy by which you can gain and win in negotiations with a, a UK government. Uh, now, I, I think that is uh, going to depend on what people put into the Parliament. But uh, people can be absolutely certain that every ALBA uh, member of the Scottish Parliament will see, will live and breathe independence, will see independence as an absolute priority, will take an entirely constructive view uh, to building that independence supermajority, that effective coalition, uh, which will put whoever's negotiating independence uh, in, as, in as strong a position as possible uh, in facing down the Boris Johnson in, in negotiations. So you can rely on ALBA to be backing independence at each and every opportunity in every way possible. But the crucial aspect is to have the legitimacy of a parliament speaking for a people which gives Scotland the upper hand in these negotiations. Next question up. Peter Smith. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Salmond. Um, just looking at the way that you're going to be lining up your candidates in every area on the regional list, it reads to me that your party is actually more of a threat to the Scottish Greens. And is it the fact that your ideal outcome would be that Nicola Sturgeon would be dependent on you after this election to go to Boris Johnson and ask for that second independence referendum? And I know that you were keen to avoid the psychodrama of making the, the last few months about a battle between you and Nicola Sturgeon, but is it not just a fact that you standing is now going to be, in many people's eyes, Alex Salmon taking on Nicola Sturgeon? Well, I, I, obviously one, one poll is one poll, but it does give an indication of, uh, of where we stand in Scottish politics. Uh, if we take that Salvation Survey published yesterday, I think that gave the SNP 67 seats, all one on the constituency section, none on, on the list. I think it gave the Greens another 11. Uh, if ALBA is able to make a contribution, that might take the independents supporting uh, MSPs in the Scottish Parliament, of which I hopefully will be one, but there'll be ALBA MSPs, uh, to perhaps 90 out of the, the 129. Now, that is a, a powerful position to have. Not a weak position, but a, a powerful position. And it's a powerful position that goes beyond party because it's a parliament. You know, this is uh, much, much too important uh, to get lost in personalities. This is uh, uh, an issue about the future of Scotland, about how to construct that independence majority. And I will cooperate, I will argue positively with everyone and contribute positively in order to build that uh, independence coalition and what I think is crucial, an independence supermajority in the parliament. Not a, a narrow thing, not dependent on the whims and each budget of, of will we, won't we, in terms of a, a vote, but a secure majority that the parliament will be trusting that will become a parliamentary matter, how uh, the process of independence is negotiated with the, with the UK government. That is so much more of a, an advantage in making it party against party, Tories against SNP, Prime Minister against First Minister. To have a reliable supermajority at the back of the First Minister in facing down Westminster, I think might be, well, it would be crucial 
and gaining an advantage for Scotland and having the legitimacy that's required to enable the country to move forward in these independence negotiations. Next question up. Uh, yes, thank you. I'd like to ask two questions, um, if possible. Um, Mr. Salmond, there have been reports that your own legal team were overheard describing you as a bully, a nightmare to work with, a nasty person. In court, um, it was admitted that your behaviour could have been better. You've faced numerous allegations of sexual harassment and assault, um, albeit that you were cleared of. Why would anyone want to vote for someone like you? And my second question is, as an outsider, some people might see what's going on here and think that your political career has failed and you are now desperate to stay relevant at any cost, even if it means trashing the party that you spent most of your life um, working for. Is that a fair assessment of what's going on? Uh, well, let me take your first point first. Uh, there have been two court cases, uh, as I said, one in the Court of Session, which is the highest civil court in Scotland, uh, one in the, the High Court, which is the highest criminal court in Scotland. Uh, there's been two judges, there's been a jury, and uh, there's been three inquiries. Uh, now, as you know, uh, I'm saying we should accept the results of these court judgments and accept the results of uh, a jury. Most, most fair-minded people do that. In fact, not just more fair-minded people, it's the essence of a, a justice system. Uh, so I think that should apply to, to everyone. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, say that all of these things have to be accepted. And in terms of the inquiries, I'm prepared to accept the, the judgments of these inquiries that I didn't agree with, uh, as well as pursuing the, the conclusions that I, I do agree with, hence the ongoing civil and, uh, uh, and uh, also the report to the police. These all came out of the of the inquiries, which I'm saying that everybody should just accept in order to move on. Uh, secondly, uh, as I've been saying, the, uh, uh, our intention in this campaign for the ALBA party, and this is what we'll do, is to put forward an entirely positive case for independence for Scotland. Uh, we are not challenging the SNP on the constituency ballot. That is a deliberate choice uh, because the SNP we believe will hopefully sweep the country on an independence uh, platform, a referendum platform, on the constituency ballot. Uh, but the list section, the likelihood is the SNP will get very few or perhaps even no MSPs at all. And we'll be back to the situation uh, that suggested in that surveillance survey or demonstrated at the last election uh, where up to a million independence votes will effectively be lost in the regional list section. Now, ALBA and indeed others are putting forward ideas of how to, to tackle that, of how to, uh, to, how to solve that and how to stop the wasted votes. Now, that reinforces not just the cause and the case of independence because of the positive way it's being put forward, it also reinforces the independence majority in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, and I think it's absolutely fundamental if we're going to succeed in negotiating the independence of our country that we can rely on that handsome, substantial supermajority of independence supporting MSPs because it is fundamentally more difficult uh, for a Westminster government to take on a parliament and a people as opposed to just casting it as a party v party dispute. Everything that Alba does in this election will be a positive contribution to building that independence supermajority. The next question. Thanks, uh, Chris Green from the Eye here. Um, uh, two campaign related questions. One, um, obviously there are TV debates already being announced by the broadcasters. Would you expect to be given a podium there as the leader of the party? And also, um, will you be touring the country as part of this campaign yourself? Can people expect to see Alex Salmon popping up in their constituency? Uh, well, good questions, Chris. I mean, uh, we'll be making representations to the broadcasting authorities. I think we'll have to demonstrate our list of candidates. The candidate deadline is next Wednesday, and uh, we're looking for support today. We're looking for people to come forward uh, if they wish to associate with uh, ALBA, and that's be advertised on our uh, our site. You know, we, we are looking for uh, people and recruits, and we've got a very, very sharp timescale, uh, not just to... 
uh, to get that list of candidates in, but also to uh, uh, to found a, a new political force, a new political party, and take that case to the people. We're well aware of the of the the shortness of time scale. Uh, and therefore, once we've done that, if we demonstrate we have got people of calibre, that we have a bread for support, we're making a serious challenge in the list section of the ballot, it then would be in a, a good position to go to the broadcasters and say, look, it would be fair to, to hear what we've got to say. Uh, but we'll see if we could demonstrate that, uh, that bread for support by next Wednesday, uh, and then we'll take matters uh, from there. As far as going around the country is concerned, we'll have candidates, ALBA candidates across the country. Obviously, I'll do my best to, to get around, given the restrictions that we all face at the at the present moment. And uh, some of these have been lifted for the election campaign, but, but not all, as you're well aware. Uh, but we'll try to conduct a, a grassroots campaign as well as a social media campaign uh, as best we can, given the, the, the rules and regulations which all of us must obey at the present moment. On to the next question. Jason McCann. Uh, Jason McCann here from iScot magazine. Congratulations. And my question would be pertaining to the route to independence. We have been speaking a great deal in the independence movement about the creation of a supermajority, which we know by the arithmetic of the politics and certainly by the numbers in the polls that this is entirely plausible. And I believe, given the right conditions, it can happen. But we've also heard from the, the British government that the, uh, there would be talk of simply refusing this. And in light of what has happened in Catalonia, and as you know, I'm in Dublin myself, Britain has an atrocious record with dealing with democratic situations that it cannot win. Uh, Faced with the intransigence of the, the British government, uh, would you have a plan B for Britain to doing what Britain does and saying no? Well, thanks for the question. This is the very essence of the Alba Party's argument as regards our contribution to achieving independence. We think that one of the ingredients, one of the essential prerequisites, is that the independence support, not that the government's own majority for its own programme, but the independent support within the parliament is broadly based and is numerically dominant. That has to be a supermajority. Otherwise, the political party is looking over its shoulder at the array of unionist parties and are basically facing two fronts, that is to say, facing the UK government in negotiations uh, and facing the unionist parties uh, in the parliament. If there is also a bread for independence supporting MSPs behind the independence policy, behind the independence strategy, behind the independence negotiations, then that fundamentally alters the balance. It allows you to use statecraft. The most important thing to understand in the history of the SNP will tell you as we evolved in the Scottish National Party, when it evolved the, the various ways and routes to independence, from a mandate to negotiate, from getting 36 seats at Westminster uh, to uh, the latterly the referendum policy under a Section 30. These were instruments, these were tactics to achieve the strategic objective. The strategic objective of the SNP in its history and the strategic objective of the ALBA party is to achieve independence for Scotland. The democratic legitimacy by which you build that independence it is something that the Parliament can demonstrate. Once the Parliament demonstrates that, then whether your tactics are, are legal, international, are pressure, are peaceful street demonstrations, the whole array of tactics uh, come into play. And as long as they're democratic and peaceful, they're entirely legitimate. As long as they're backed by the Parliament, they'll have that necessary parliamentary uh, seal of approval. That's exactly why having a supermajority in the Parliament counts for so much. And as you rightly say, if we look at history, it would tell us that the United Kingdom governments, by and large, although there were some exceptions, but by and large did not, uh, at first blush, concede the independence of many, many places across the globe. But, but nonetheless, I think 50 countries have become un independent from Westminster since the Second World War. Uh, so countries have achieved their independence in peaceful fashion in a variety of ways, uh, and that can be the case for, for, for Scotland as well. 
it, it can be achieved democratically by consent, but a fundamental prerequisite is to have that supermajority of MSPs in the Parliament. That is something we didn't have previously, we can have now. The elections offer us the opportunity, and I think that's entirely constructive and positive for the independence case. It may change the essential balance between Scotland and Westminster. It's Ewan Petrie from STV News here. Do you think women will vote for you given that you admitted inappropriate behaviour during your time as First Minister? Well, the range of candidates, uh, Ewan from the ALBA party, will, will demonstrate that in full measure uh, our commitment to equality, to the role of women in Scottish society. Uh, and I think the ALBA party's appeal will be uh, substantial. Uh, but we'll see over the next six weeks in, in terms of uh, how people respond to the ALBA party's message. We, are, we have no uh, compunction about uh, knowing the scale of the challenge. Uh, it's not something that's uh, often done, which is uh, launching a, a political party in a six-week period, uh, trying to achieve parliamentary representation in that period of time. That is a, a, a difficult task and a difficult challenge. Uh, but it's one that's uh, in the hands of the people and not be in the hands of the people uh, over the next six weeks and, and, and they'll be the ones to, to judge. But I think what you'll see over the next few days in terms of the calibre of candidates that come forward, and you've seen uh, 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 two uh, examples of that today, uh, that we'll be, uh, be able to present uh, uh, an array of candidates which show that we have uh, a broad base of support among our candidates uh, and we think we'll find that response uh, among the people as well from all sections of Scottish society uh, and with a, a variety of points of views that ALBA will be saying things which appeal across society and we think we'll get a good response. Next question. Hello, Alec. Um, Congratulations on new party. I'm Bob Costello from uh, Dundee, and I and others ran the Yes Boss team during the last referendum campaign. Um, after the campaign, <clears throat> we kind of thought that uh, things would continue, you know, there would be some kind of a, a campaign ongoing. We discovered that was not the case. In fact, we had huge a huge amount of obstruction from the local SNP party. I just want to make sure, Alec, that after this last six and a half years of stagnation, are we, is the new party, uh, is it going all out for independence, you know, and it's not going to be this carrot dangling just before an election, and then never hearing about independence, you know, actually during the election campaign. So what's the situation in that like? The Alba party lives and breathes independence. <laughs> and, uh, everything we do uh, will be uh, uh, designed to, to help uh, gain Scottish independence, to see it as the overwhelming priority. Uh, we've got ideas to contribute to economic recovery from the pandemic. That's an absolutely crucial fact, it's a, a situation at the present moment. And we have to plan for that. Even though, though we're not out of the woods in the pandemic itself, we have to plan for that economic recovery. We've got some substantial ideas to put forward to assist in that process. We've also got ideas in terms of constructing the, the new independence platform, which we'll offer forward to, to meet the new realities, uh, the new political realities that we are now in. This is not 2014, this is 2021. But everything ALBA does to build that supermajority for independence will to see independence as a priority and will try to support the moves for independence. It's something we'll live and breathe before the election campaign, during the election campaign, and if we are successful, if we are successful, then within the Scottish Parliament itself. Next question. Honour. Hi, Alex. It's uh, Connor Matchett from The Scotsman. Um, Wanted to ask you, um, if possible, um, how would you respond to concerns raised by presumably opposition parties and 
and other Human Rights Watchers um, about your links to Russia via your TV show on RT. And secondly, who's funding this party? Is it going to be um, you know, crowdfunders or have you got backers from elsewhere? Well, in terms of in terms of funding, Connor, I mean, all our funding will be declared, but we're, we're rather hoping there might be a, an influx of, of funds coming from announcing our, our existence as a, a political party. So we're we're hoping there'll be a, a, an appeal out on that very subject, and we're hoping we'll get a substantial response. Uh, uh, it'll be very much in the hands of the people. But when we put it, when there's been appeals uh, in the national movement uh, before, then people who can see the the progress that the national movement can can gain from initiatives that have been very generous giving their, their funds. And of course, all our funds, like all the political parties in this campaign, will be openly declared. As far as uh, the, the show in RT is concerned, obviously that show will be suspended for the, the course of the election campaign. I'll be intending to be a candidate. That's part of the, the election rules. Uh, that show, of course, is independently produced by Slange Media. Uh, there's no editorial control from RT whatsoever. Uh, and uh, the uh, I think the the show is justified on its merits. I, I'm sure you you watched yesterday's uh, uh, program, uh, uh, Connor, and uh, you you found uh, Do uh, Professor Hugh Montgomery giving one of the most uh, emotional interviews I've ever seen as a as a huge uh, uh, force and uh, and specialist in academia in terms of genealogy, but also a practitioner in the wards in a busy London hospital in uh, intensive care. Uh, when he spoke about the pressures on health service staff uh, and how they've had to endure over the, the last year with things happening in their own lives. Uh, it was an extraordinary interview. Uh, I don't think anybody watching shows like that uh, could credibly uh, accuse the programmes that we produced of, uh, of having any secret agenda apart from exploding issues of the day uh, in a, a fashion which, uh, uh, which uh, I think... Uh, I think, uh, gets across the issues and the, the people and stories behind the issues extremely well. But you watch it for yourself and uh, and judge if you can see any secret political agenda behind the programme uh, behind the programme yesterday. And everything we've done has been independently produced and, and subject to the same regulations as uh, as television shows. But it gives me the opportunity uh, to say that the, the show, obviously, because I'm a candidate, will be suspended for the for the next six weeks. Next question. Hi, Alex. This is Louise Wilson from Holyrood Magazine. Um, I just want to ask, how confident are you that given the last few years, you'll have the trust of the people of Scotland? And will you be putting your name on all ballots next to the name Alba Scotland? Yeah, well, well obviously our list is still to be submitted, but uh, I think you'll, uh, you'll find when we submit a uh, list of candidates, which will be a minimum of four from uh, from each area of Scotland, you'll find that it's balanced not not just by gender, but balanced uh, in a range of ways. It demonstrates uh, uh, support from all aspects of Scottish society, which is so fundamental in terms of gathering confidence behind the the independence cause. Uh, we believe that can be done without uh, uh, the party having uh, artificial uh, regulation, because it just needs acquirement and will to do it. But of course. Uh, you know, by our deeds, we shall be known, and and we'll see next week if we can uh, we can bring that forward as a, a a list of candidates that people will look at and say, yeah, by gender, by a whole range of characteristics, this is a this is a list which represents the the people of Scotland. In terms of confidence, well, you know, uh, we're six weeks away from an election. Uh, we're uh, hoisting the uh, the the flag. We're we're sticking our salt out on the hill. We're appealing to people to rally for support, but th this will be up to up to the people. I mean, uh, we believe if we campaign positively, constructively, we stay on the independence case. We argue about the supermajority and the importance of it. We contribute our ideas to economic recovery from the the pandemic, and we offer concepts which might uh, help construct the new independence platform that's desperately needed if we're to. In, if we get to gain and sustain the confidence of the people in the independence concept, if we can do that, uh, then I believe that people will rally to that standard. But the, the next six weeks will tell uh, uh, if we can uh, both gain and maintain uh, the trust of support enough to elect ALBA representatives to the Scottish Parliament. We are in the hands of the Scottish people and that's exactly how it should be. 
that next up. Hello there, Alex. Uh, first of all, congratulations for uh, emerging from your nightmare. Um, for the last two years, I've been batting off people telling me that uh, Scotland is a one-party state, unlike Boris Johnson and the Tories with their 80 majority, uh, even though the SNP is a minority party. And I can hear by the tone of the uh, right-wing newspaper uh, journalists that uh, they are determined uh, to uh, argue that a multi-party uh, state is just as unhealthy um, and I'm very sorry indeed to uh, have heard some of the questions put to you but these are the same people who refuse to look at the democratic deficits that Scotland endures and has endured since uh, 1707. My question is uh, on those lines and that is uh, the antagonism that people like me have had to uh, handle uh, from the Scottish National Party, which has moved from uh, an all encompassing, you know, uh, we take all sorts uh, party uh, uh, of people from all walks of life to one in which um, I as a, a private citizen, a member of the public choosing to use the internet to communicate uh, is branded a cybermat um, and uh, we are alienated and um, a great deal of SMP, MPs and MSPs block the very people who vote for them. Uh, in other words, they have arrived at a stage where they think the people are the problem. You will be, and the ALBA party will be relying on the same means of communication, particularly the internet. Um, how are you going to discipline your candidates not to get frustrated by dissent, uh, which may be positive dissent in what you and I would like to see, and that is a truly democratic society? Gareth, can I say just uh, uh, how much I welcome uh, the, your question? Uh, and to see you uh, uh, on screen. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, among his many other achievements in his, uh, his working career, Gareth was the, the founder and inspiration for the Scottish Youth Theatre, which uh, has, uh, has given so much to so many youngsters uh, emerging in, in Scottish society, and it's a, a wonderful thing to have done, Gareth. And uh, your blog is good as well, incidentally, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, that is a... An outstanding, outstanding achievement uh, that should be recognised. In terms of your question, we have some advantages. Uh, you know, we are Alba's not out to become a governing party. We're, we're not out to go into administration. Uh, and I say this just because, as somebody who's been first minister, who's been in government, uh, I know that uh, the exigencies of being in government and of holding uh, the discipline of, of necessary discipline of government can. It can sometimes seem uh, over restrictive to, to to people, but it's part of the the process of being able to guarantee votes. Now, obviously, Alba is in the fortunate position uh, that we're not intending to be a governing party, uh, and therefore, uh, over and above our fundamental aims, which are being outlined today and specified in our literature, that is to build a an economically successful, environmentally responsible and socially just, social democratic society in an independent Scotland, there is a, a latitude uh, which we'll want to uh, uh, allow in points of view. Every political party has to decide where the, the line should be drawn between matters of policy and matters of conscience. Now, it may be, and I probably agree with this, that that line has been far too far in one direction of late. Uh, you have to have a a, a toleration of ideas, and particularly on matters of conscience, which are, are crucial to people. A political party should not dictate uh, the individual conscience of its uh, of its members or its representatives, unless it's absolutely required.
in terms of saving the, uh, the party from a, a vital vote. or whatever that. Now, Alba's in the fortunate position. We're not in that position, uh, and therefore we want ideas to come forward from a range of people and a, a, a range of aspects of society, from the trade unions, from business, from working-class voices, which would be uh, are badly needed, in my view, in parliamentary politics, and uh, we'll be supplying uh, some of these in our candidates' list, which I think is absolutely vital, so people can look at their parliament, not just from a, a gender, not just from a uh, a minority point of view, not just for people with disabilities, these are absolutely crucial, but a range of people across society. Uh, because if we're going to have an independence parliament, it's going to have to be able to take forward it in a fashion that everybody in Scotland can look at that parliament and say, well, I might disagree or agree about something or this thing or the next thing, but I tell you what, I can see within that parliament voices which I can identify with as speaking to my concerns and my realities. Uh, so ALBA will try to contribute to that. Obviously, uh, the contribution will depend on the, on the votes of the people, but we'll certainly put forward that and we'll certainly not try to, to unnecessarily restrict our, our members of Parliament beyond the fundamental aims of achieving a prosperous, just, environmentally responsible and independent country. Uh, beyond that, then I think ideas for the party in our position, with a party with our contribution to make, it would be an extremely good thing. Next question. Uh, hi, Mr. Salmon. It's uh, Dan Sanderson here from The Telegraph. Um, I just want to ask you, you've used terms like effective coalition um, with the SNP, but surely that would require some degree of um, cooperation between the party leaders. So will you be reaching out to Nicola Sturgeon to you know, try and build bridges there? Um, and also, you've, you've spoken about a, a supermajority, obviously, um, in the parliament, but there isn't a supermajority for independence in the in the country. I think if you got ninety, you know, if there was pro ninety pro independent MSPs, that would be seventy percent of the seats at Holyrood. And obviously, there's you know no, nothing like that in the country. So, how would you respond to the accusation that this is an attempt to sort of game the electoral system? And you know, doesn't it risk? lessening support for the institution of the Scottish Parliament if, if you have a, a parliament that is, you know, so unrepresentative of the, of the views of the country. Thanks. Well, well, Dan, can I say to you that the Haunt system has uh, critics, of course, as any list system has critics. Uh, most people, I think, would judge that uh, proportional representation has been more successful in representing the, the views of, uh, of Scotland than, for example, first past the post at Westminster does uh, the views of the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, Boris Johnson has his near 100 majority on a, a minority vote uh, at the present moment, as you're, as you're well aware. So uh, any, uh, any political system has its critics, but generally speaking, People would argue a list system, a de haunt system, in terms of representing a country and giving fair representation uh, is superior to a first-past-the-post system. But uh, I know that the Daily Telegraph doesn't question the legitimacy of, uh, of Boris Johnson or his government. Others might well do, but uh, the Daily Telegraph is, is not among them. If I could put it this way, my, my dad was a, a keen golfer. Uh, and if I got into the, the rough when I was playing with him, he always used to tell me that I had to play the ball as it lies. I might not like being in the rough, but I had to play the ball as it lies. Uh, with the, uh, the Hunt system, with the Scottish Parliament elections, we have a system that was agreed. And all parties, not just the Alba party, have to play the ball as it lies. We have to make the, the best of the system. There is nothing to stop the unionist parties, and I think some people are arguing that. They should form a, a unionist coalition on the list and try to put things forward. That, that is their perfect democratic entitlement to do. Similarly with the other independence list parties, they have a perfect democratic entitlement to put forward their point of view, and ultimately the people will judge who's got the best argument and who merits representation. Now, in terms of the, uh, the first part of your question, uh, let me just emphasise, I don't foresee ALBA as a party which is going into government. Uh, I don't think that will be a role in the, in the Scottish Parliament. 
uh, I see Alba uh, in, in coalition or, or uh, supporting uh, the uh, government as part of the government itself. I don't see that the Alba MSPs have ambitions to be government ministers. Uh, what I see Alba's doing is providing that super majority for independence in the parliament, uh, which is crucial. That's not a coalition. That is uh, contributing to an independence majority, which will reinforce the legitimacy of the parliament speaking for the people. I see Alba as contributing ideas for economic recovery. Uh, these are badly needed because we are going to emerge from this pandemic when we emerge from it, and we're going to be hit by a, 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 an economic maelstrom. Uh, of immense proportions. We have to have the, the measures and contribution of ideas what these measures should be. Uh, in addition, this election campaign is going to have many coming forward. Alba will make a contribution to that. And thirdly, as I mentioned, the, 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 it seems to be very, very important for the independence movement uh, to bring forward the, the new independence platform. It takes account of the fact that we're seven years on from the, the last referendum. The world has changed very, very substantially and the independence platform must meet these changes as it points the way to Scotland's future. That's a, a contribution rather than a coalition, Dan. Next question. Political. Hi, yeah, this is Andrew McDonald from Political Europe. So, hi, Alex. Is, is this party standing entirely as a vehicle for this election, or should we expect to see them standing in local elections or even by-elections um, as we move on? And second, quick question, if I may. You, you still have allies in the SNP, Alex. Should we expect to see any anyone else joining the party as well as you announced Chris McElhaney today. Should we expect to see any more high-profile defections? Well, I, I think, Andrew, we've announced uh, three uh, what I describe as high-profile recruits and, and four, if you could, myself, uh, today who've got uh, who've played a substantial role in, in Scottish politics. But uh, as I've said, we're hoisting our flag today and, and you know, this will be the first that, that well, just about everybody in Scotland has heard of the Alba Party. Uh, out with Laurie and his team of people who planned the idea and the people we've discussed it with. So we, you know, we're planting our flag in the wind and uh, and we'll see who rallies to the banner. That's that, that's the important point of, of making the announcements. And I've tried today to give as much of a flavour of what the party's about to to enable us to recruit uh, recruit support. But we'll be looking for, for people who, who want to join, who want to contribute, who want to be candidates. And we've got until next Wednesday to put forward that uh, panel of candidates. I'm confident we can do it. It's a very tight time scale. Uh, and then we've got six weeks to, to take our case to the country, and I'm confident we can do that as well. But the end game of this will be judged by the by the people. Uh, and similarly in terms of Alba's development, this is a, a, a an organisation which is focused uh, on standing candidates in the list section of the Scottish Parliament. If you look at our constitution, it doesn't exclude having councillors, MPs and, uh, and the rest of it, nor should we, because that's important that, uh, that Alba can, uh, can look forward in the future to that sort of representation. But the priority for Alba is to get a list of candidates ready for these Scottish Parliament elections. That's going to be a Herculean task uh, over the next few days, because next Wednesday is the, the deadline. They have to be in by next Wednesday. Uh, and uh, you'll judge the calibre of our candidates by the people who come forward. I, I think that calibre will be strong. I think we'll start from a strong foundation. And then, as I say, over the next six weeks, we'll take our case to the country and we'll be, we'll be judged by the people. Next question. Tom Gordon. Hello there, Alec. Um, we've all heard your mantra about two court cases, two judges, one jury and three inquiries. I think it's going to wear a bit thin over the next six weeks because character matters to voters. And I think voters want to know if you are a reformed character or whether you are still the bully and the creep who is described in court. Are you still a bully and a creep or have you reformed? 
Uh, well, Tom, uh, I think it isn't a matter of having a mantra uh, about court cases. There's a, a reason for having court judgments and, and going to court, and that is to establish things. Uh, there's a reason that we have juries uh, in this country, and there's a reason for, for, for having charges and being able to answer them. Uh, and the verdict kind of matters. It matters not just to me, it matters to any decent democratic society. So it ain't a mantra that we've had two court cases, two judges, a jury and three inquiries or investigations. I mean, that is what has happened. Uh, and I'm saying that uh, uh, I'm prepared and do accept the results of all of these investigations, court cases, juries and inquiries. And the two matters which I've identified in terms of taking forward uh, are things that uh, arise out of the inquiry findings, not the ones which were agreed by you know, five votes to four, but the ones which were agreed unanimously by the, the variety of parties on the uh, inquiries. And I think that's a, a reasonable position to take. Uh, in terms of character mattering, then that's exactly what an election is about. Uh, and I'm hoping that as I put forward in a positive way the case for an independent Scotland, the case for a, a super majority in the Scottish Parliament, the contribution that I think I will make, the list of candidates it will bring forward, the ideas that we have, the contribution we can make to the economic recovery of this country from the pandemic, uh, and then the construction of that new independence platform by a parliament and not just a political party, is a strong argument which people will look to, and the way in which we express it uh, perhaps will contribute to the the character judgments you're looking at. But look, this is a, an argument that's going to the, the people, Tom, uh, and on the people's hands that argument will rest. Either ALBA will be successful, uh, that uh, many people will rally to our standard, or it won't. And, and we'll find out over the next six weeks, more immediately, we'll find out over the next few days as to whether we can get that candidates list, which I'm promising, into place by next Wednesday. But the ultimate judgment is uh, going to be one for the, the people to make, and on that uh, judgment will the success or not of ALBA depend. What I'm certain is if ALBA are successful, if we are successful in gaining a, a foothold, representation in the eight regions so lists of Scotland, then that in itself will make a substantial and positive contribution to the supermajority in the Scottish Parliament, but more important, in one of the advantages of having that parliamentary legitimacy will contribute to the independence for Scotland. Uh, and whatever I have or haven't been throughout my political life, I have been devoted to that cause and will continue to be devoted to it till the day I die. Next question. Yeah. At New York Financial Times, uh, thank you. Uh, there's clearly a risk that if the Alaba party doesn't get to the threshold for an MSP from a regional list, then that you could actually uh, reduce the number of pro-independence MSPs, <coughs> particularly if you take votes from the Greens. What percentage of the vote do you think you need to get to to prevent that happening? Uh, and separately, you've made the point about uh, respecting the judgment of the inquiries and courts, but I think people are interested also in your personal judgment. And um, do you personally feel that you have anything to apologise for in your conduct towards women while you were First Minister? Well, take the first one first. Uh, the, the point I've made is everything I've said on the record about these matters stands. Everything I said in court and elsewhere stands. But the court judgments are also important because you bet your case, uh, as I did in the the High Court uh, of Judiciary, but also in the, the Court of Session uh, and uh, in front of the inquiries. You, you make your case and then you accept the results. You accept the things you like and you accept the things you don't like. And uh, what I've said about that, Muir, and I think it's crucially important, is that people now accept what has happened after two court judgments, a, a jury in the, uh, in the High Court, two judges, three inquiries, it seems a, a good time to accept what's been said, to take the implications of the recommendations uh, as I've laid out and to move on uh, to debate the future of Scotland. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm doing and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, as far as the arithmetic of the DeHaunt system is concerned, well, I, I did pray and aid the observation poll uh, from yesterday. And you know, as far as the, uh, the SNP is concerned, uh, given that the SNP were forecast to win no that is zero 
uh, list seats in that poll despite winning 50, 60, 7 constituencies, I think it was, across the country, but no list votes off a 39%, which would be almost a million votes. Uh, well, you know, obviously there is a substantial opportunity to increase the number of, of independents supporting MSPs in the Parliament to build the, 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 the supermajority. Uh, that seems to me a, a good thing. Uh, as far as the the parties which are standing on the list, then you know, Alba will put forward our platform, uh, the Greens will put forward their platform, other parties, uh, the FI and others might put forward, the ISP might put forward their platform, and, and people over the next six weeks will judge. But it's not for me to, to tell uh, these other list parties that they should or shouldn't stand. They've got an absolute democratic entitlement to do so, to put themselves be before the people. But I think there is a substantial opportunity, many other people think that as well, of getting more independent supporting MPs, MSPs, into the Scots Parliament to build that supermajority. Uh, and I think in terms of the cause of independence, it's an opportunity that should be taken because I think that supermajority will be crucial uh, to strengthening Scotland's hand in the difficult negotiations to come. I think it will be absolutely crucial to have that platform of independence supporting MSPs in that parliament. Next question. Andy Phillip, uh, Press and Journal. Um, Alec, you said you're standing on the northeast list, uh, presumably at the top. Uh, the last time you stood on the northeast, you in in the northeast, you lost. Uh, what do you now have to offer constituents other than a campaign for independence? Well, Andy, uh, I mean, in terms of political history, uh, I, I may have this wrong, actually, because I sometimes do, but but I, I think I'm right in saying I stood ten times in the north-east of Scotland and won nine of them, which, uh, I mean, obviously, I'd have loved to, to be in ten out of ten, uh, but, uh, you know, nine out of ten is not a bad batting average, uh, Andy. Uh, but, well, you know, it's at the hands of the people. You, you're as good as your next... Uh, a result, not your uh, last result uh, in politics. In terms of the North East of Scotland, then uh, there's absolutely vital things to be done. Uh, we have uh, uh, enormous issues uh, with regard to uh, our uh, food and fish processing uh, industries in terms of access to European markets. Uh, uh, I know that many people who, who saw Brexit as a solution to their problems now see Brexit as an absolute nightmare in terms to get access to markets, but importantly, of course, to sustain the prices of their, their produce, uh, which depended to a great extent uh, on the, the quality of, uh, for example, Scottish langoustine being supported by the prices it commanded in the Spanish and French marketplaces. And this is a, a huge tragedy uh, that's going on that... Uh, uh, at the present moment, uh, one that uh, many of us uh, foresaw as a, a problem but was waved away as an issue by the, the UK government. Uh, and then for so to get that guaranteed access to the marketplace in economic terms, to that single marketplace, is absolutely vital for a, a food and fish producing area like the, the North East of Scotland. That, that's what sustains the prices and therefore sustains the livelihoods of, of many of, uh, of our folk here. Uh, second issue is the transition in terms of fossil fuels to other forms of energy. As you know, I, I was uh, extremely keen. I'm extremely keen. I even had an argument with the former President of the United States about it, Andy, uh, about the importance of us broadening our base from uh, hydrocarbons into the renewable sector. Uh, not just into the renewable sector, obviously, but to carbon capture. That uh, argument needs to be rejoined uh, because it can only be more pressing uh, to have that uh, diversity uh, to build the energy expertise which we have in abundance in the northeast of Scotland and to make sure that it commands its position in the offshore renewable sector but also in the renewable sector of the new technologies as a whole. Now some work, some important work is being done uh, and we need to do rather more of it very quickly. Uh, and perhaps the recovery from COVID uh, will provide the economic financial impetus uh, in order that uh, should be done. Uh, and the last point I would make, uh, the announcement about uh, uh, John Lewis's in, in Aberdeen is an uh, is illustration of the, the great challenges that we're going to face 
uh, and the huge importance of the ideas that uh, the Alba Party and I am sure others will bring forward uh, for economic recovery from the pandemic. Uh, and these are things which we hope to contribute to in the campaign uh, so that people across the, the northeast of Scotland and indeed round the country uh, will consider us worthy of consideration in the regional list ballot. Next question. Hey, hello, Alec. Roddy McLeod here, uh, Barhead Boy blog. Uh, can I just firstly say it's great to see you back. It's wonderful to have a, a positive campaign and a great campaign and someone who's been like a colossus over our politics for years. And uh, can I say I'm also horrified, horrified at some of the media questions that you've had to suffer today. One of them, one, some, one mentioning that character matters, but obviously not when you work for the right wing media. Um, but what I would like to ask you is that uh, one of the most important things is education. I think all parties, including the SNP, uh, all the parties, the establishment parties, have failed to really educate the people on the, the vagaries uh, of the, the list system, the, the Dehon AMS system. It's something that we need to do. How do you see, because it's so vital, of course, to ALBA, um, to, to get people understanding that. How, how do you see that you can help promote that and educate the people in six weeks um, towards that goal of understanding how important that regional list vote is? Thank you. I say, it's, it's really nice to put a face to Barhead Boy, Stanley. <laughs> but it tells the questions. People are entitled to ask the questions. We have an open uh, press conference. People can uh, can ask me what they like. That's uh, that, 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 that is part of the engagement of uh, politics. And I make no complaint whatsoever ab about that. That's uh, uh, that's up to folk how to frame their questions, and uh, and I'll frame the answers. Uh, in terms of the, your point, yeah, I, I, I'm really interested. And in, I think it was the Dan of the Daily Telegraph was asking uh, about, you know, uh, the the hot system isn't this kind of gaming the system, uh, you know, as if people don't game the uh, first past the post system. The the wasted vote argument, of course, was an argument in the first past the post system, which was used for generations against the SNP, uh, used against the Liberal Party, used against the Green Party, used against the Socialist Party, used against uh, many parties who didn't have a, a view which was uh, compatible with the, the mainstream or establishment thinking. And so first past the post was done and used in a way to crowd out uh, different uh, different points of view, and eventually the SNP overcame that uh, and uh, uh, were able to uh, to massively gain from uh, from first past the post. So the the haunt system and the nature of it and the list system of the Scots Parliament was there for a purpose. It, it was there to give smaller parties with something to say and something to offer uh, an opportunity to gain a foothold in the Scots Parliament. And at various elections, that has been done. We've had uh, not just a, a variety of socialist parties, we've had sparkling independents like Dennis Canavan and, of course, the late Margaret MacDonald, who had a wonderful contribution to make. Uh, we've had the Pensioners Party, we've had the National Health uh, uh, Party at various points. So th that, that has done exactly what it said on the De Haunt tin. It gives people the opportunity in the regional list vote uh, to add some flavour, colour, some grit in the oyster of the Scots Parliament. Therefore, uh, the Alba Party, in standing for the list, uh, isn't taking advantage of the system. It is playing the ball as it lies. It is showing that the list system gives that opportunity for emerging ideas to gain a foothold. Now, I think they're emerging ideas which are crucial to Scotland's future at the present moment, because there is nothing more important than recovery from the pandemic and some of the contributions we'll make to that. There's nothing more important than constructing the new platform for Scottish independence and the ideas we can bring forward to that. And there's absolutely nothing more important than having a supermajority of MSPs in that Scottish Parliament to provide the, the comfort and the support for the independence negotiations to cast that argument as Boris Johnson against the Parliament and against the people of Scotland not as an inter-party to battle. Uh, and uh, thanks for the question, Barhead Boy. Foster from Global Radio here. Um, now, I understand this multi-party position that you're talking about, the 
that having more than one party uh, going for a Section 30 order will be perhaps more plausible um, than the current situation with just the SNP. Um, but is there any precedent that you can think of of a party this close to an election that is launched uh, finding success at the polls, barring, of course, Nigel Farage's Brexit party? And, and if that's the case, are you seeing Nigel Farage and his Brexit party as your role model here? But no, I'm not. Uh, no more than I'm seeing President Macron as, uh, as my role model, who'd be another example of a uh, uh, a party which emerged very close to uh, uh, elections. Look, these things are not easy. Uh, I mean, the the reason that you were looking just for one example, and I've given you another. I think we both might struggle if we would get to. Well, let's put it this way: we both might struggle if we had to to go beyond counting the fingers of one hand. It doesn't happen very often. But it does happen, it can happen, and it happens when the conditions are right, that people have a, an argument to, to, to put forward. Uh, but I'm not underrating the difficulties uh, attached to this. I mean, this is a, a substantial task to get a list of candidates in by next Wednesday who are of the, the complexion, the calibre and the breadth uh, that Alba is looking for, and then to take that case to the country over six weeks, that is a, a huge task. And, of course, to get the voter appreciation and acknowledgement uh, of your existence, of course, is the first hurdle to get over. So, of course, it is a, a, a substantial task, but the opportunity is there. Uh, the, uh, the position is there in the, in the list to put forward a coherent argument and to add to the independence firmament in the Scots Parliament. So, uh, I think it's a, a, a substantial task, but it's something that needs doing that should be done Therefore, I've accepted uh, Laurie Flynn's uh, invitation to take Alba through this election. I'll call you back, Laurie. Hello? Hello? Apology, Peter. They're, they're giving you a second go before people have had a first go. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. I'm very, no, I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Salmon. Sorry. It was in response to has been a statement released by the SNP. Uh, and I'm grateful for you taking the second question. But they're saying, the SNP saying in response to your launch that this is perhaps the most predictable development in Scottish politics. They said that. Um, uh, at a time of crisis, the interest of the country must come first and should not be obscured by the self-interest of someone who shows no sign whatsoever of reflecting on serious con concerns about his own conduct, concerns which, to put it mildly, raise real questions about the appropriateness of a return to public office. This is a party that you're saying that you want to help. It doesn't sound like they want your help at all, Mr Salmond. And I would also say that there have been questions raised by other parties today about whether women can feel safe working with you. And I know that you, you've said you've, that's been dealt with already. I just wonder if in response to those concerns, are you taking any extra set, steps to safeguard women who will be working with you? See from the Alba Party's list of candidates, uh, uh, some substantial uh, uh, women candidates will be coming forward, uh, and that I think speaks for itself, Peter. Uh, as far as the, the SNP, well, again, according to my pledge, of the Alba will be a positive campaign, and we shall not rise to any negative bait. Uh, I, I would just comment that if this was the most predictable development in the, in Scottish politics, then as far as I know, very few, if any, people have actually predicted it. Uh, so it's somewhat easy to say something is predictable after the event. Uh, the, 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 the challenge of a prediction is to make that forecast uh, before the event. But let me repeat the ALBA pledge uh, that we'll go forward and we'll campaign uh, in an entirely positive fashion on a platform that will assist independence for Scotland because we believe a contingent of ALBA party MPs in the Scottish Parliament will build a supermajority for independence, which will be an essential advantage uh, in Scotland's position in negotiations with the Westminster government. It will provide uh, perhaps the crucial ingredient which will tilt things in Scotland's favour 
and ALBA will go forward, both in the nature of our campaign and the contribution we're trying to make. Uh, and at the end of the day, in six weeks' time, it will be the people who judge the outcome. You're done. So make it a good one. Thanks, Peter. Just good all. Mr. Salmond, um, over the, uh, it is entirely possible that at the end of this, you and your party, if you're elected as you will hope, will hold a balance of power in the Scottish Parliament. You may be asked to put in a position, as we've seen over the last few weeks, where you may have to express confidence in the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, certainly potentially vote for her to continue uh, in her post after that election. Given everything that you have said and the opprobrium with, on which you've, uh, which you've poured on many of your former colleagues, many of whom you've alleged have effectively engaged in a conspiracy against you, how can you really do that with any credibility? Well, first things first, uh, you know, the uh, election of First Minister in the Scots Parliament, I mean, I, I was elected, I've had a member as First Minister with 49 votes out of 129 in the, uh, in the Scots Parliament. The contribution we want to make in the Scots Parliament is to the independence platform to make sure there's that uh, supermajority of SNP MPs, uh, but uh, uh, supporting independence so across the, the range of parties. Uh, you know, we're a, a party which is uh, unambiguously saying to people, vote for your independence candidate, your SNP candidate, in your constituency ballot. So we're already giving the SNP that uh, endorsement uh, and support, uh, and we're saying vote for ALBA on your regional list ballot to get that supermajority which will provide an impetus uh, for independence. Uh, I think, as I said on Wednesday, uh, that once the, uh, the inquiries were over, uh, and as I've said at this conference today, uh, if we encompass that within the, uh, within the two court uh, judgments, uh, the jury's verdict, the two judges and the three inquiries and investigations, uh, then you've got kind of two choices. You can either say, I didn't agree with that, I don't like it, I don't think that should have happened, or you say, look, we'll accept the verdict. Uh, I'm for accepting the verdict. The two continuing actions which I identified on Wednesday arise directly out of recommendations of the inquiry, unanimous recommendations of the inquiry, uh, and therefore that is part of accepting the recommendations. I haven't raised questions over the, the issues where uh, I thought the, uh, the inquiry were wrong or the Hamilton report was wrong, because at the end of the day, if you engage in a process, you've got to accept the outcome. I engaged in these inquiries and therefore I accept the outcome, just as people should accept the result of court judgments and jury verdicts. Really important that people do that, in my opinion. But I'm prepared to do it, I'm going to do it, and that's why ALBA will be an entirely positive force in Scottish politics and Scottish society and in the campaign for Scottish independence. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their questions today, every single one of you, uh, and uh, let me repeat the six weeks we've got to establish ALBA's significance in Scottish politics. Uh, to gain representation from uh, a standing start, uh, I think we can do it. I'm not getting no claim it's going to be easy. Our objective is to gain a foothold in, the, in each of the, uh, the list areas of, of Scotland and gain support for people who will appreciate we're going to try to make a positive contribution to Scotland's recovery from the pandemic in economic terms. And we're going to contribute to the, the platform for an independence, independent country, which is essential if we're going to, to, to face the realities of where we are now as opposed to where we were in 2014. Uh, and, and thirdly, and crucially, and devastatingly, obviously, take the opportunity to build that supermajority of independent supporting MSPs in the Scots Parliament. I think ALBA can do it, we can make a contribution to do it, but myself and every other ALBA candidate will be putting ourselves in the hands of the people. The one certainty you can have is everything we do say in this campaign will be entirely positive and about the future of Scotland. It will be an entirely constructive contribution to a debate I enormously look forward to. And with that, thank you one and all to the uh, television, to the, to the mainstream media, to the bloggers, to, to our international questioner from, uh, from Spain, uh, and to everybody else who's been tuning in. 
It won't be the last you hear from Alba, but I hope you quite enjoyed what you've heard so far. Thanks again, and good afternoon.